All right, question of the day. How do you tell a good UV filter from a bad one? Hello everybody, nobody wants to get ripped off on UV filters. That is why today I'll be talking about the ways to differentiate a good UV filter from a not so good UV filter so you don't end up paying extra for a UV filter that is not worth the money. Now just to clarify, most UV filters on the market nowadays don't really block out UV rays. You can test that by shining a, a black light through and you'll realize that the black light still goes through. Unless, of course, one of the only UV filters on the market now that I know of that still blocks out UV rays is the B plus W486 digital UV slash IR MRC blocking filter. So, but anyways, most UV filters nowadays that come at, I don't know, a fraction of that price don't really block out UV filters because digital camera sensors nowadays are unaffected by UV rays because they have a built-in filter. So you don't have to worry about UV rays messing up your image. So the main function of a UV filter is to protect the front elements of your lens. So there are a few things you should look out for in a good UV filter and what you, you should look out for to tell that the UV filter is pretty much a bad UV filter. So the first factor you want to look at is transmission. Now transmission is basically how transparent the filter is. With a high transmission value, the UV filter allows a lot of light to pass through the filter without much deviation. With a bad UV filter, the transmission is pretty much very bad. Now the way to test this is actually very simple. All you have to do is hold up the UV filter against something and then look through it. Angle the UV filter so that it's not reflecting any big light sources. So you get a clear view through the UV filter. Now if you look through the UV filter and then the glass of the UV filter looks invisible to you, then it has very good transmission. If you can clearly see the glass, then the UV filter has poor transmission. Remember, the glass should look invisible. It should look like you can put your finger right through the black ring. Now, of course, make sure that your UV filter is clean. If not, you'd see the dust and the grime on the filter. So clean your filter first. If you're buying a new filter, then you probably wouldn't need to clean it. Just hold it up and it should look invisible to you. The glass on a bad filter will look very, very visible. Now another thing to look out for is reflections because good UV filters shouldn't reflect a lot. Now all you have to do is hold it up and angle it around. It's okay to have some reflections from some very bright areas such as a light source. However, if you can use it like a mirror, then chances are it's a pretty bad UV filter. It shouldn't be able to reflect too much. Now another thing to look out for is the coating on the UV filter. Now many UV filters have HMC, SMC, that stands for high multi-coated or super multi-coated or just MC, multi-coated. So with a coating, it will reduce glare and flare. Now many UV filters have multiple layers of coatings, but how do you tell if the filter actually has a coating applied to it? Now all you have to do is try to reflect a light source off of the UV filter such as the light in your room. Get it so that you can see the reflection of the light on your UV filter. It's best to have a white light source or a neutral colored light source because if you can see the reflection of the light source in a different color such as green, blue or pinkish magenta, that means it has coatings. Coatings tend to change the color of the reflections. Now, if the reflection of the light source is in the same color as the light source, i.e. white, then you got ripped off because the filter doesn't have coatings applied to it. Now, another thing to look out for when it comes to coatings is a MRC coating. Now, MRC stands for multi-resistant coating. Now, this is usually only present in higher-end filters, so don't be surprised if not all filters have this. But if you have it, it's definitely a plus because multi-resistant coatings make the UV filter resistant to oil, scratches, and water. So it should be harder to stain an MRC filter with fingerprints and if water droplets were to get on the filter, they should beat up and roll off. So MRC coatings make the filter much easier to clean. So it's always, always a plus to have a filter with MRC. Now another thing to pay attention to is the thickness of the filter. Now this is particularly important if you're buying a filter 
for an ultra wide angle lens because ultra wide angle lenses have a very wide field of view so if your filter is very thick you risk the edges of your filter getting into the edges of your frame hence causing vignetting. So if you're considering on buying a UV filter for an ultra wide angle lens, then you might want to consider taking a thin one. If you're going for a thick one, be sure to test it out on your lens first, stop it down and take a few test shots with it on and make sure it causes no vignetting. If it's fine, then it's fine. So this is more important for wide angle lenses. If you're buying it for a standard zoom or a telephoto lens, then it doesn't really matter too much. So that is pretty much it everybody. I hope my video has been able to help you understand what is a good UV filter and how to look out for a bad one. If you have any questions and comments, just post them in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.